Hey friends, welcome back to my channel at the Starlings. If we haven't met yet, I'm Peggy. I make videos about homeschooling, homemaking, and family discipleship. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Today I'm just gonna bring you a little large family vlog, just talk through some things that are going on over here at the Starlings and help you get to know us a little better if you've never been around my channel before. So again, if you're new here, welcome. I have been married to my husband, Andy, for 11 years. We have six children. One of those children is our foster child. Um, and our oldest child is seven. And our youngest child is four months. Our foster child is 18 months. So we have a lot of very small children. We feel that our children are a blessing. We believe what the Lord says in his word, that children are a heritage, that they're a reward. We love having a large family. We're thankful for each and every one. So that's our perspective on our large family. I am a stay-at-home mom and I homeschool. Um, prior to being a stay-at-home mom, I worked in foster care adoptions. Um, that was my career beforehand. My husband is a nurse, a registered nurse and also works part-time for our church. So he is very busy, very hardworking, and he cares for us, for his family well. So we're so thankful for him. So first I wanted to give a little update on the foster care situation. So our foster son has been with us for about a year and a half, getting close to a year and a half. Um, if I haven't said before, he is related to us, so while we're still still a foster home, it's just a little bit of a different situation for him. So we had a lot of court hearings uh, in the last couple months. We had one really big one this month in August. So we are still waiting to hear the decision from the judge on that court hearing. So there's a lot of big things coming up for him, for his case. So if you could pray for our family, and for him, we would really appreciate it. We call him Reed. Uh, that is not his legal name, but that is what we call him. And we are getting that from Isaiah 42, verse 3, um, which says, A bruised reed you will not break, a faintly burning flax you will not quench, you will faithfully bring forth justice, which is about Christ and what he is doing. So we thought that would be a good a nickname to give him. So we call him Reed. I'm not sure if I've said that on my channel before, but it's okay to share that because that is not his legal name. So not giving identifying information. But I just thought about um, Isaiah 26 verses three and four during this whole fostering situation, especially in the place we are right now with waiting on um, a judge to make decisions, waiting to figure out, you know, what's going to be the next steps for this case. So I wanted to read to you Isaiah 26 verses three and four. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. So this has been such a good verse for me. Um, there's been a lot of anxiety and concern in his case since we've been fostering him. So remembering that um, I need to trust the Lord, that the Lord is the everlasting rock. The Lord knows what's going on. He knows what's to come in this situation. So remembering those verses, reminding myself to trust the Lord in this has been such a comfort to me and has really eased the anxiety and helped me to repent of the anxiety and trust the Lord. So I hope that is helpful to you if you have a stressful or um, anxiety producing situation that is in your life. Okay, next we started our homeschool year. This is our third year homeschooling. My oldest daughter is in second grade. My second daughter is in kindergarten first grade um, she's supposed to be starting kindergarten based on her age but she's doing a lot of first grade work just because she wants to um, she did a lot last year because she wanted to so we're just going with it my third daughter is in preschool she's doing 
you know, learning letters and learning to write and those kinds of things this year. Then my two toddlers, one is about to turn two, the other is 18 months old, that's our foster son. They are just kind of along for the ride. We're doing a lot of school while they're napping. And then my baby is four months old, getting ready to be five months old. So he's just along for the ride too. He's hanging out sleeping or I'm nursing him, different things while we're homeschooling. So I'm still kind of figuring out our schedule to make sure that we're getting all of our school subjects done during the day, that I'm doing all the homemaking that I need to do, and that I'm, um, you know, making all of our meals at home, lots of good nourishing meals, and also being sure to spend time with my children, with my husband, making sure they get outside, all of those kinds of things. So once that schedule is more ironed out, then I'll be doing a video about that um, just to help with anyone else that has a lot of children or a large family, a lot of small children with scheduling and fitting homeschool and homemaking and family discipleship into everything. Okay, so we have had the last couple weeks a pretty stressful situation with my husband's car. So he has a car that um, is just a little small car that we bought about five years ago, um, very cheap, um, that we bought for him to take to work, basically just to and from work. And the van that we have that fits our whole family is at home with me during the day. So his car was parked in a parking lot at the hospital like normal. And this time he went to leave work, it was raining, and the car was flooded. It was underwater. Um, I'll post a picture so you can see what that looked like. You can imagine this was very stressful. Um, we tried to kind of let the car air out, see if maybe it would work again. It won't. It's completely dead. So we had to get rid of that car and find something else for him to get to and from work. Um, we are a large family. We have a small income. Like I said, my husband works full-time as a registered nurse, part-time um, for our church doing some administrative type things. So we don't have a huge income. So we had to just kind of get what we could. So with the help of my parents who are in Tennessee right now, we found a truck, uh, 96 um, Ford F-150. So my parents brought that down from Tennessee. We bought that. Um, very inexpensive. Again, another just inexpensive vehicle that will get us through for a while. So we bought that. It's like a powder blue color. So it's he's totally going to stand out. Um, but it's really great. We're really excited about that. He's excited to kind of work on it. He really enjoys detailing cars. So he's excited to detail this truck and get it looking, you know, the best that it can look. And um, he's excited to just work on that and to have something again that he can take to and from work so that I can have the van while I'm at home with the kids. The last thing I wanted to share with you today was something I was watching and thinking about that had to do with parenting. I know it's super controversial to talk about parenting online because you know, there are studies that show that anything that you do is messing up your kids, that um, anything you think is good is really bad, and things that we used to think are bad are good, and things like that. So I typically ignore all of that, ignore the modern psychology, and just focus on what the scriptures say and do that, because the Lord is the one who uh, created the family, who um, set this all up. Um, so I believe that we should be trusting the Lord and his word and what it says about parenting. So I was thinking about how as parents, we are reflecting Christ to our children. So whatever we are doing is showing them something about Christ. So I was considering when my children experience affliction, like how we experience afflictions, um, something like scraping their knee or something, that we should be comforting to them because the Lord cares about us in our afflictions and he comforts us. Um, also, whenever, 
our children are in need of forgiveness, um, that we are to forgive them when they are repenting of something they've done. You know, we are to show them love and forgive them just as Christ forgives. So I've just been thinking more and more about how what I am doing is reflecting Christ to my children. And it's really caused me to think twice about my behavior, about my attitude towards my children. So it's been really good and convicting to think about that. So what got me thinking about that was watching a couple of videos that are from Elizabeth Elliott. She was the wife of missionary Jim Elliott to Ecuador. Um, if you haven't heard of them before, there's a whole book uh, through Gates of Splendor um, that's about Jim Elliott and the other men that were with him ministering and sharing the gospel to a tribe in Ecuador that had never heard the gospel before and they end up getting killed by the tribe. But Elizabeth and her daughter, um, Jim's daughter, they go back to Ecuador and become missionaries there. So she has an incredible life story. Um, she is such a wealth of wisdom. She is no longer with us, but she has just such amazing books and videos and things. So this is from an old tape from like, it's the 80s or 90s, I'm not really sure, but it is on YouTube. So I'm gonna link that for you in case you wanna watch it. It's called A Peaceful Home. And there's two parts, so I'll link both of those. I found those really encouraging and convicting, so you might enjoy watching those too. Last, just wanted to give you a quick reminder, something else I've been thinking a lot about that I need to hear too. Um, be present with your family. Be present with your kids. Um, you know, there is work to do with discipleship, with homemaking. Um, if you're a homeschooling mom with homeschooling, there's so much to do that is right in front of us. So we need to be focusing on that. So I encourage you today to be present with your family, to focus on what's going on around you and who is in your home, loving your children and loving your husband well, pointing them towards Christ and doing what we are called to do as Christians, to love our family and care for our family well. So I'm encouraging myself to do that um, and I encourage you guys to do that as well. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed just this little vlog family update and I'll see you next time.